All right. So the other day, I was actually talking to uh, a customer who was having issues with his uh, bypass valve from factory, and he was throwing a code. And I started to explain to him, you know, how to fix it and everything. And it came to my attention that a lot of you guys out there don't understand how this works. Um, so I wanted to make this video that way I can explain to you how this the bypass valve, blow off valve, recirculated blow off valve, and you know how all that works and basically give you knowledge on what you need to know before you replace a blow off valve or you upgrade to a different blow off valve or anything like that. All right, before I get to the boring part about teaching you how this thing works, um, make sure you hit like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way you're notified every time a new video is uploaded. Uh, let's get right down to it. Blow off valve, bypass valve, recirculated valves. I mean, you've heard the terms, but you don't quite understand one, how it works, why you need it. And like, what's the point, you know? Um, the, like I said before, earlier part of this video, the reason I'm making this video is one of the clients that were, um, that was about to get custom tuned through us actually messaged me and said, he's throwing a blow off valve code and if it's okay for him to get tuned. And I told him, no, it's not okay for you to get tuned. You need to address the blow off valve issue first. And he didn't quite understand why blow off valve issue could actually, you know, balloon into more than just a blow off valve issue. And, you know, I told him, you know, having a blow off valve that doesn't work properly could actually damage your turbo. And you know, it was a lot of back and forth of questions where I don't, it, I just came to realization that this person does not understand how this works. And I should probably create a video because um, I'm sure there's more than just this one client that don't understand how this works. So let's get down to it. I'm going to see if I can clear this up for a lot of you guys out there, you know, make it easy to understand that way you know how important blow off valve function is to a car. Okay, so first thing I wanna to talk to you about is the OEM setup in 99% of the turbocharged vehicles out there. It is usually what's called a diverter valve, um, or it could be called a bypass valve, or it could also be called a recirculated valve or recirculation valve. Um, they all mean exactly the same thing, okay? It basically means the blow off valve recirculates air into the intake before the turbo. The reason they do this, one, it keeps the turbo spooled up a little bit better because you're technically throwing all that pressurized air in front of the turbo to spin the turbo better. Um, and two, if this, on certain cars, this they may have a sensor here that's called mass air flow. So mass airflow sensor cars basically read how much air comes into the engine. And if you are not, if you're not recirculating this back so that the mass airflow realizes how much air you actually have um, and matches up the numbers of before and after, you actually might run into tuning issues. Now, with that aside, a lot of the newer cars do not run mass airflow. A lot of the newer cars run what they call a mass or actually manifold absolute pressure sensor, the MAP sensor, all right? With MAP sensor, there is no sensor here on the intake, so there's no reason you have to recirculate. But the newer cars do still recirculate even without the mass airflow because a lot of times people buying these cars don't want to hear the blow off valve sound from an OEM car because you have to keep in mind, 99% of the population out there will hear the blow off and will think the car's broken because they don't know what it is, okay? It's not like the enthusiasts where they really want to hear that blow off valve every time they shift. So OEM wise, 99.99% 9, .99 of the time they recirculate whether or not you have a mass airflow or a map sensor. Okay, now with that said, I'm gonna show you how this works, why it works and why you need it, okay? So when your turbo spools, your air goes in, spools up, all, all the air that came in gets pressurized, right? It gets, it gets, um, goes to like what, 15, 20, 30 PSI, however much PSI you want to go, it will actually compress the air and it will pressurize it, which goes through the intake, um, the intercooler piping goes through the intercooler and then goes in through your throttle body intake manifold into your engine. 
creates power, goes back out the exhaust, rinse and repeat. Like that's the whole process of how a turbocharger works. It compresses, shoots it into your engine, creates a huge bang, and then it goes out your exhaust. And while it's going out the exhaust, it spins the turbo, which actually creates more air to be sucked in through and compressed through the uh, intake side of the turbo. Now, if you see here, the blow-off valve situated here before the throttle body and after the turbo, okay? So the blow-off valve can be, a lot of times, can be right on the turbo intake side. Sometimes it's on the intercooler. Sometimes it's on the cold side. Honestly, the position of it doesn't really matter that much. But for diagram's sake, it's here on the piping right before the throttle body. Um, the most important part of the blow-off valve is, you know, it needs to be obviously between the intake side of the turbo and the throttle body okay the reason blow off valve exists is your throttle body is has what they consider um a butterfly valve which basically is if you look at a dead on picture of your throttle body let's say this is your hole on your throttle body there's going to be something that looks like this Okay, so this butterfly valve basically opens and closes. So from a side side view, so this valve is basically going through like this, okay, and then it closes and, and it opens, and it allows the air to basically travel in and out, or, or allows the air to travel in and then shuts the throttle so that your RPMs come down and you know you're able to idle and it's able to control all that through the actual throttle butterfly, okay? Now, here's the problem. If you're driving, and let's say you're you're boosting really hard, and you're making 25 PSI all the way through, and then you go to shift and you let off your throttle, this valve is going to close. When this valve closes, all the pressure that's left inside this intercooler piping, where does it go? It doesn't just sit there and wait for you to actually get on the throttle again, because your turbo is still spooling. So this is still trying to push and this air is stuck. So what happens then is because your turbo is not, although your turbo is spinning, it's not making boost anymore since you're off throttle. It'll actually take this, since this is a higher pressurized air, it'll actually take this air and it will start to go back. And what it does is it will actually spin this turbo backwards. Now, what's so bad about that? Think about this. If your car is still on, right? you're still actually exploding and doing your thing in here your exhaust gas still travels although it's not traveling at a high rate of speed it still travels and spins the turbo one way the way it's supposed to spin but this pressurized air goes in and starts to try to spin it the other way on the intake side so now essentially what you're doing is you're twisting and you're really giving pressure to the wrong side on one side while giving pressure on the right side on the on the exhaust side and you're twisting the um the actual turbine wheel and by doing so you can potentially and most definitely damage your turbo now the question is how long does it take to damage your turbo um you know and things like that so i mean it's not like just because your blow off valve didn't work one day that your turbo is going to be shot you know within the hour that's usually not how it works it does take some time for it to actually get damaged over time but with that said, even like the first time you twist that um, the turbine wheel the wrong way, there is a potential of small damage to a bigger damage. So it's it's not like it's not like something that you should take lightly. If you're throwing a code that actually says, "Hey, your blow valve is not functioning correctly," you need to take care of that almost immediately to make sure you know your three hundred dollar blow valve isn't damaging your two thousand dollar turbo. Okay, so it's pretty simple, right? What it does is it releases the pressurized air. Okay, so let me get rid of all this. That way you can see better. So all this pressurized air, when your throttle body closes, when it closes up, instead of going back and spinning your turbo backwards, it actually gets released to the atmosphere. Okay, so that way you're saving your turbo from spinning backwards, twisting your turbine wheel, and breaking anything that's expensive that's literally the job of a blow-off valve 
Although it sounds simple, it is a very integral part of a turbocharger system um, to make sure that your turbo lasts a long time. Now, going back to the beginning of this, where I talked about recirculation and you know diverter valve and things like that, aftermarket blow off valves can still recirculate if you wanted to. If you don't want to uh, have that blow off valve noise, um, a lot of the blow off valves out there have a recirculation option where it's usually like a little adapter you put on the front of the blow off valve you know, and then you run a hose into your intake so i mean that's where you're going to have your option of whether you want to blow to atmosphere or go back into the intake again just to point out if you have a mass airflow sensor on your intake system you do need to recirculate if you don't have a mass airflow on your intake and your car is a map so map map only um, vehicle, then you, you can always vent to atmosphere without any issues. Okay. Um, I hope this does help you understand blow off valves better and why it is so important to have it. Um, you know, don't cheap out on a $300 blow off valve because at the end of the day, you may actually end up breaking your two to $3,000 turbo. Okay. All right. Um, I hope that clears everything up and I will see you on the next one.